Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. So because our firearm law is very complicated, it's very difficult, there's often a lot of discussion online with people trying to figure out the intricacies of it. Uh, sometimes people are right, sometimes people are wrong. But where these disputes sort of come up, I like to take note because that gives me an opportunity to try to clarify things a little bit. So let's dive in here. I've blocked out people's names and pictures because I'm not trying to call anyone out. As I noted, firearm law is very difficult, very complicated. It's very easy for people to make mistakes. Um, you know, nobody should feel ashamed of that. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to sort of go after anybody. And this one uh, notes, while drinking beer in the garage, this question came up. All magazines over five rounds for the ARs are prohibited. But now that the AR is prohibited, can we drill the rivets out? So if you're not a sort of Canadian gun owner, if you're not super familiar with this, uh, what they're referring to is that most magazines are manufactured to their sort of standard capacity. And so uh, when they're brought into the Canadian market, they get modified down to our legal limits, uh, often by setting a pin or some other sort of modification to prevent it from accepting more, uh, more cartridges. So what he's asking is, can I undo those modifications so that then it can be restored to standard capacity? Now, uh, he notes all magazines over five rounds for the ARs are prohibited. Uh, that's true for all magazines that were designed for use in AR-15 rifles. Uh, there's an issue with respect to the LAR-15 pistol, but that'll be a subject for another video. I... I'll talk in more detail about the LAR-15 pistol and what that involves in Canada. So that's sort of our starting point is he's asking, can we drill the rivets out? And the short answer is no. And the long answer is no, because uh, <laughs> it's uh, the problem that happens is that uh, notwithstanding the, uh, the status of the AR-15 currently as sort of in this limbo state covered by the amnesty, there's no amnesty that applies to magazines because the magazines haven't been reclassified. Uh, the AR-15 magazines still remain under the same legalities that they were before. So the AR-15 magazines are still legal unless you drill out the pin, in which case you're gonna get into a lot of trouble. So don't do that. All right, let's look at some other answers here because some other people made ants, you know, may have uh, ventured things that were not always correct. So an individual here uh, notes, no, you're still only allowed five rounds total. And that part is correct. Five rounds in the magazine. Uh, and don't put one in the receiver and another in the mag making six rounds. Very expensive fine and loss of the rifle. So what he's referring to, if you're not a gun person, is you take five rounds in the magazine, uh, you put it into the rifle, you chamber around, so there's one in the rifle itself, eject the magazine, put a new cartridge into the magazine, and then seat the magazine again. So at that point, you've got five rounds in the magazine and one in the chamber. And where he goes wrong is saying that this is unlawful because there is no law saying how many uh, at least not in the criminal code. There may be hunting regulations in certain areas that prevent this, but in terms of the uh, the criminal code aspect, uh, what is controlled is the magazine. There's nothing that prevents you from chambering around, uh, assuming that you're in a place where you can lawfully load the firearm. So I don't know if there if he was trying to refer to some local hunting rule. Uh, because sometimes hunting regulations will limit how many uh, cartridges can be in the, the actual firearm. But for purposes of the criminal law, this is not correct. Um, somebody also notes, okay, but you can get a bolt-action gun that takes AR mags. Why can't I have a 30-round Ruger American Ranch? And again, the answer here is because it's the magazine that's prohibited or not prohibited. It doesn't matter what you put it in. It doesn't, you don't have this situation where if you move a magazine from one gun to the other, that it transforms from prohibited to legal or legal to prohibited. And that makes sense, right? You want the magazine to be, you know, you want to be able to know whether this magazine is a prohibited device or legal 
Um, and that shouldn't depend on sort of where it happens to be sitting. So that's uh, sort of that point on that one. All right, moving on to the next one here. Uh, someone says, if you own a bolt action that takes the mags, take the pin out. And again, this is way wrong. Uh, this is a great way to get yourself some jail time because it doesn't matter if you own a bolt action rifle that also takes AR-15 magazines. The fact that it's an AR-15 magazine is what limits it to five rounds. Uh, bolt action rifles, a rifle that is designed for use in a bolt action rifle is not limited but uh, once you're talking about an AR-15 magazine it is limited in Canada to five rounds even if you own a bolt action rifle that uh, can take it. Again the law is written here in a fashion where the magazine should not change status in terms of whether it's a prohibited device or a legal magazine uh, based on where it is. It's uh, you know it's supposed to be some certainty to that and that's I think some sensible design. So somebody notes the mags themselves are a controlled device and it, and are designed for the AR-15. In the eyes of the law, it doesn't matter that other devices were designed to accept them. So that is exactly correct. So this person got the uh, the law right, and that is a good thing. All right, sort of cycling over to the next one here. Uh, somebody says, if it's in a bolt gun, I don't think it matters, but in a semi-automatic, it has to be pinned. Again, the same sort of mistake of this notion of the magazine changing status depending on where it goes. Um, that's incorrect. Somebody else comments, if you don't have the spring with the mag, you will be fine. That's not correct, unfortunately, because we do have some case law where somebody was importing magazine bodies that were unpinned, and they noted that their plan was that they were going to pin it later. But uh, the uh, what the court found is that those magazine bodies were enough to constitute the prohibited device. So this notion that you can have an unpinned magazine just because you pulled the spring out is not correct. It's a great way to get yourself into trouble. Um, you can see me there commenting that I was going to make a video. But uh, yeah, it's these are very common misconceptions. Um, they come up all the time where people have these notions because our law is really not written to make it easy for lay people. It's really a difficult area of law. And so hopefully this has uh, provided a little bit of clarification. Uh, some of the people involved, they might uh, have a look at this, I hope, and say, oh, hey, I was right, or oh, hey, I was wrong. And... Uh, I think it's it's good to promote understanding within the firearm community because I really hate whenever I see somebody who gets busted for uh, for misunderstanding our laws because, of course, ignorance of the law is not a defense in Canada. There is a specific limited defense of officially induced error, but it's not a very good defense. Perhaps I'll do a video at some point in future on officially induced error and when that can apply and when it doesn't apply. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this has been enlightening. I hope that this has uh, answered some questions, maybe cleared up some misconceptions. Uh, please like this video. Please share it with your friends. Please subscribe to see more content. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, D. Mo, Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta, Canada's National Firearms Association, and Kyle Martin. At the $20 level, Cameron Johnson, Kevin Fleet, Dale Nesbitt, and Andrew Elsich as well as a number of you at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge.